what's up guys hope everybody's doing well and having a great day happy tuesday the day after the great eclipse of, of 2024 as you can see in this video right here we're taking a look at the the sphere amongst other things that were seen um actually this was seen via a uh, sun observing sun orbiting satellite right there it is that's a good view of it right there in this format right there and i'm assuming that that object right there is the moon going in between the the satellite and uh, the sun but it might be the earth maybe it's something else i don't know but there's the sphere right there that showed up i got other things to to share with you guys in this video we're going to look at uh, some unusual objects that occurred during the eclipse, after the eclipse. This was obviously one of the things that was uh, spotted before the eclipse. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Polenta, AZ Watchwoman, Ricky, Agent Fletcher. How you doing, guys? Um, just getting started here. Got a lot of material to get through. This is the SDO, Solar Dynamics Observatory. It monitors the sun 24-7, has since 2009, and I have been a frequent flyer um, since 2009. I've been using this instrument for over 15 years, and this is only the second time, maybe the third, there was a small one that showed up, but this one here showed up exactly 12 years uh, from March of 2012, showed up on the day of the eclipse, looked like a, a big mothership, and that was what was the the talk of the town, so to speak, back in 2012, how this thing looked like it was attached to the sun, pulling energy off the sun, and then detached, and I'm waiting, that's what we're waiting on, still watching this thing here, waiting on it to detach like the other one did, so, so we'll see, we're keeping a close eye on that. Um, with regard to the eclipse yesterday, uh, it was great. You know, everybody in the path of the, the eclipse had a, a spectacular view, as anticipated, um, with the exception of a few areas that, that, that had some uh, pretty heavy cloud cover. Overall, pretty good. I've got some excellent video I want to share with you guys. I've also got a mysterious craft um, that was spotted during the eclipse, Looked like some sort of a, actually two, two weird UFO type objects. Um, here's something that I want to uh, get started with. And yes, as, as I implied in the title, uh, the dragon, it did show up. It was just a little hard to see. And that's the unpredictability of comets. If it would have been a little closer to the sun, you would have definitely seen it. No doubt about it. Um, it went a little wide. Um, it was a little uh, not quite big enough for it to feel the, the, the solar wind and stuff. You got to keep in mind it was out near the orbit of Jupiter. Uh, but you never know about these things. It could have been an overachiever, but but it's still there. That was the comet right there. That's the comet, the, the big dragon in the sky. I'm going to show you the comet here in just a couple of minutes, so stick around. You'll be able to, to see the comet. Yes, it's still there, and it's it's still moving through the, the sky. Um, this happened yesterday, just after uh, the eclipse, and I'm not quite sure what to make of it. This is raw, unedited video out of Western North Carolina, sent by Don Weiss. It's either Weiss or Weesey. Um, yesterday, during, or I'm sorry, right after the eclipse, 3:58 p.m. Here we go. And again, this is the original unedited video. I didn't do anything but put her name on it. Check it out. What is that thing? It's moving way too fast to be an airplane. That is definitely not a helicopter. Are you kidding me? And you know what? That's not the comet. You'd think, okay, there goes the comet. No, that's not the comet. That is not even a comet. Here it is in a, 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 a modified format. And what I mean by modified, I never fool with any type of the components uh, with regard to an anomaly like this object here. I may adjust the lighting and color. Um, if it helps the video, if it helps the presentation, of course I will. Um, but other than that, as far as it goes, and I adjusted the, the lighting here. There it goes again, again in, rich, in original speed. I didn't adjust the, the speed of the video. Another uh, unique format. Watch it come into the top part of the screen and go across the screen right to left at an angle. Again, original speed. What is that thing moving at? I, I don't even know how 100,000 miles an hour or faster. So that tells you, here's two things. When you look at this, the reason it's forming a tail more than likely is because it's somewhere near the upper atmosphere, but that is moving way too fast to be any type of a man-made object because it would fall apart. 
the friction that it would encounter in the atmosphere would, would basically cause it to burn up. So I'm not quite sure what to make of this, but that was a, a great observation uh, by Dawn out of North Carolina just hours after the eclipse, man. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff uh, going on yesterday during the eclipse. Uh, things seen in Dallas, the, uh, North Georgia, um, a whole plethora of things that we're going to uh, talk about in other videos, not necessarily today's videos. But I want to show you something else that was spotted. This was spotted during the eclipse, okay? Okay, here we go. What you're looking at right now, these are examples, and the reason I'm showing you this is because in this upcoming, uh, this next segment, um, what you're about to see is not a, a, a military flare. These are, however, these are examples, good examples, of military flares. They usually involve smoke, and they're usually a light gold, um, light yellow in nature, and that's normally what they look like. What you're about to see coming up right here, uh, uh, it, this was seen during the eclipse, was orange, I mean bright orange, very fast and not a flare. Check it out. Here we go. Frank Swamp, I believe out of Buffalo, New York. Check it out. Whoa, what's that? Oh, man, I knew it. The left-wing cover-up. <laughs> this is what they're covering. What is that? It's not a flare. Down? There's a picture. It's a drone. It's a drone. Isn't that wild? Okay, there it just went out. So does that look like those? No, not even close. Look at that thing. Here's a close-up view. What was that thing? Apparently moving at a pretty good clip. Wasn't blinking like a typical aviation um, craft, an airplane, helicopter. Maybe way too fast to be a helicopter. But notice... Let me pause it real quick and turn the volume down. Notice its position. I want to analyze this real quick. Notice how high it is up uh, off the horizon. It's up, I don't know, what, 15, 18 degrees. And we're going to fast forward it. Watch where it ends up at the end of the video before it goes out. I mean, you're talking three degrees off the horizon. So in less than a minute, this thing covered a vast area, had no smoke like you see here, totally different color not a military flare. What that was is a mystery. Just like what we saw in North Carolina, a mystery. There were mysterious objects yesterday during the eclipse. I saw two myself. They weren't big deals, but there were two mysterious objects I saw out here in the sky in southeast Phoenix. Uh, but again, they weren't anything nefarious. They looked like some sort of, of orbs, to be honest with you, in the southeastern sky. They were both um, in the southeastern sky. Uh, one was kind of a round, light brown color, and the other one was white, made a sharp left-hand turn, and um, went through, went to the southern sky. Um, so, th and there's a whole bunch of others we're looking at, like, again, Dallas, North Georgia. Check this out. This is a, a, a really good view of the shadow on the Earth, visible from, uh, from space. Uh, Ollie out of Scotland happened to be watching the ISS live cam and check out the shadow on the earth. Are you serious right now? Look at that. Wow. So when daylight turned to dark yesterday, and, and those of you in the past, I saw some really good videos out of Dallas, uh, saw videos from Indianapolis. Uh, you guys had, had quite a show. Um, you're going to see some of that video footage here in just a moment. It did turn dark in some areas. I saw some buildings uh, light up in downtown Dallas. The lights came on. Look at that. Big old black circle on the earth. How about that? Great catch by Ali. Once again, Ali's out of Scotland, but he noticed that on the International Space Station uh, live cam. I took this photo myself yesterday. This was right as the eclipse was getting ready to start. 
out here in in, uh, in Phoenix. And we had a little bit of cloud cover at the very beginning. And this is what the sky looked like. It just looked kind of weird. You know what I mean? It had a, a dark halo. That's a halo. You can see the circle. And I, I don't know what's going on here in the middle. You could interpret this thing probably a, a hundred different ways. It just looked weird. I took one photo, and that was that. And the clouds moved out about 10 minutes later. But just looked kind of strange, and there were some other things in the sky that, that looked kind of uh, unique as well, but I'm uh, not quite sure what that was. It may not have been anything, but um, pretty cool. And here's a, a, a really cool video out of Broken Bow, Oklahoma, sent in by, by Aaron and Trey, who had an excellent view of the eclipse. Aaron and Trey, Broken Bow, Arizona. How about that? What an incredible view. And and there also night uh, daytime turned into nighttime. Here is a view out of Indianapolis. Check this out, man. This was captured what you're about to see was captured on a ring cam. Now, there's some inserted video footage from the gentleman, uh, I believe his name is Dan G., out of Indianapolis, Indiana, who inserted some footage of the eclipse uh, from his uh, recording device. This is the ring camera looking out over his yard, and you're going to see daylight turn it's going to turn dark. I mean, it's really cool. A little cloudy, um, but the clouds were not... Uh, to, they didn't create too much interference. In fact, in some cases, you could see through the clouds. You can see it's starting to, to dim. Notice the daylight giving way to the, the darkness as the moon is turning the sun black. There, it just turned dark right there. Unreal. And I believe you can see right there at the top, I believe that's Venus at, at the very top of the screen. Uh, Venus, if you guys were in the path of totality, here's the thing. The comet may or may not have been visible. Um, it just depends. Uh, it, it had to react to the sun uh, pretty pretty good, and, and it was already reacting anyway. And these are inserts that he sent in during totality, once again, from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, you guys... You guys were you got quite a treat yesterday, no doubt about it. What a celestial event! Um, just to just the the feel with the, the temperature drop ten to fifteen degrees and and daylight turning to darkness and and just the energy flux and stuff like that. It was really cool, uh, really really cool. So once again, this was out of Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm going to step it forward a little bit. He sent in this video. I've got other videos that I want to share with you guys. This was quite exceptional. In uh, Dallas had a really good view too. But notice the, the ring camera turning. Uh, it, it's just depicting what it sees. It's dark. There's Venus in the sky. Are you serious? How, and the lights are on over there at his neighbor's house. <laughs> and it's the middle of the afternoon. This doesn't happen very often, so we're going to transit right there from uh, nighttime back to day. What an event. Said a little prayer and, and thanking God for allowing me to witness his wonder. Great job, Dan. Really appreciate that. Excellent video. You guys uh, sent in some really cool videos from across the, the path of totality. Um, Here's some more video footage. Check it out. These are great. Just in case you guys didn't get to see, we, we I've, I've received footage from all along the path. You know, 60%, 50%, 80%, 90%, 95%, obviously 100%. Check this out. Listen to people. Go on wild Kerryville, Kerrville, Texas. Right on, man. Isn't that cool? Huge crowd. We're going to see the crowd right here. Looks dark outside. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, baby. Right on, man. That's cool. I can feel the energy through the laptop. Very cool. Randy Richards, rock star preacher, sent in these photos from his backyard in Dallas, Texas. 
How about that? Man, they had a spectacular view. Even though they had a little bit of cloud cover, wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad at all. Uh, another spectacular view. Uh, boy, the, the, the sun it looked like the sun turned black. I mean, what a day! What a day! And we and we know from you know modern science that's not the case. But um, if you didn't know a thousand years ago, you'd think the sun turned black. Here's daylight turned to darkness. Kerrville, Texas. James Cole. James, yeah, James Cole. It's in the middle of the afternoon. Are you serious? Streetlights on. Oh my God! This is so weird. <laughs> That's in the middle of the afternoon, folks. Wow. Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Another video by Trey and Aaron. Coming up next, we're going to look at the dragon. And it's still there, guys. Um, if you have a really good set of binoculars, you'll be able to see it. You'll probably be able to see it without binoculars. San Luis Valley, Duane. And, and these are multiple examples all along the path. This was probably around, I don't know, what do you think, 50%? Right around 50% to, to, to total air coverage. Good video, thank you, really appreciate that. Just some small segments from multiple videos. Okay, those are the eclipse videos. I don't know what happened there, that just got stuck. Isn't that wild? I've never had that do that. We'll turn it off and try it again, check it out. Along the path of totality. That's wild. I've never had one do that. But anyway, I had more. We'll share them again in another video because I want to take you guys to the friendly skies of the solar system. Here we go. Um, you guys are going to see the the dragon. It's here. It's still here. We talked about this for uh, many months. It arrived. It's still here. In fact, here's its position, its exact position right now as I do this video. Here we go. This is from the NASA JPL, the, the, the comets at the nine o'clock position of the sun, almost 10 o'clock. It just, it, it, it's still above the ecliptic plane. The ecliptic plane is an imaginary circle around the, the equator of the sun. And the planets are either above the ecliptic plane, on the ecliptic plane, or slightly above. This comet is just slightly above. So it's still visible in the evening sky if you know where to look. And again, look in the position of Jupiter, and you should be able to see it. Um, it's about as big as it's going to get. Um, because it's not reacting to the sun the way it could have been. Again, every comet is unpredictable, highly unpredictable. The, the, the closer they are to the sun, the more they're going to react to the sun. We've been calling this the dragon. It could have potentially looked like a dragon flying through the sky. This is the spacecraft that, that's monitoring the sun, and the dragon is over, behind, uh, and to the left of the sun. Here we go. Here's the sky map and this is its exact position. And this is what it looks like if you were um, in space with a really good camera you could pull that in. But there's Jupiter, uh, Venus which was visible during the the, the path of totality, 100% totality, but not anywhere else. And here's the dragon. There you go. Told you it was there and it's still there and it's going to be there for a few more days if not a couple of weeks. There it is. That's what it looks like. And did you notice that right there? The sun, th I think it was the sun. I don't know, but I slow it down, and we're going to zoom in. And, and there was some sort of debris. The sun's to the right. Okay, that's Venus and Mercury, those two orbs you see right there. Let me back it up just to show you exactly what's going on. Uh, Venus, Mercury, there's the comet, 12P Pons Brooks, a.k.a. The, 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 the green dragon, whatever you want to call it. There it is right there. So it looks really good from the spacecraft observing the solar system. These are obviously uh, modified formats. I just adjusted the, the lighting. In fact, this is an inverted format where light is dark, dark is light. You can see background stars. Did you see that right there? 
the sun has a uncanny habit of, of, of throwing mass at comets and it did it again see it right there I'm gonna slow it down you'll be able to see something came from the direction of the sun you're gonna be able to see it really good here in a minute sometimes it'll throw a full-fledged CME right there do you see that I'm gonna back it up and we're gonna stop it right there did it again and we talked about this before we even saw it on here, before it, be, before it became visible on here, that there was a possibility the sun has a habit of throwing debris at comets. Almost like it has some sort of, you know, uh, ability to know it, it, a comet is getting close. Did it again. Some sort of debris right there. I paused it. That's what I paused, and I adjusted the lighting so you could see a little bit better. Look at all that debris headed in the direction right over there of the comet. Again, this is Venus, Mercury uh, comet moving through the, the inner solar system. Still there, guys. And you might be able to see it tonight. There it is again in slow motion. Look at the debris headed right towards the comet. The dragon, which is right up there, moving at probably somewhere in the neighborhood. And this is actually slowed. This is actually sped up. It's mo it, it looks like it's sitting still. Um, but it's moving somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 40, maybe 50,000 miles per hour, something like that. It's moving along a pretty good clip. Comets move very fast, and it depends on their density. Um, and, of course, their size, but density is the main thing that determines their speed. So this one, being that, that it held together, it's fairly dense. That's about the size of, of, of Houston, the core of the comet. The coma and tail are obviously much bigger, um, but it held together, didn't break apart. Sometimes comets, when they get very close to the sun, they break apart into you know a million pieces. But there's the debris. It wasn't a CME, but the sun let it know, hey, man, I know you're over there. Come on in. <laughs> Does it almost every time. I can't. I lost count. I quit counting how many times I've seen comets throw debris, or the sun throw debris in the direction of comets. How cool is that? So yeah, people have been seeing things, uh, or reporting things being seen in the sky during the eclipse, and we're going to touch on all of those that I can find um, in the next day or two. This was a, an absolutely beautiful um, a view here by Christine out of Hamilton, Texas. Sent that photo in. Looking at the, the activity of the sun itself, been pretty quiet. The, the sun has, for all intents and purposes, flatlined because there's not a whole lot of, of activity on the Earth-facing side of the sun until recently. Got a new sunspot in active region, actually two. They're primed for M-class solar flares. Not much more than that right now. We did see some earthquakes before and after the... Uh, the eclipse down in Indonesia coincidence I don't know but they were shallow quakes looking at the earthquake activity over here at the Yellowstone supervolcano caldera um, a little bit not necessarily a lot but some you know you see the the dark blue what that represents magma intrusion and you would expect that at a supervolcano um, but not too much going on at the supervolcano right now I believe uh, Texas could be experiencing some in climate weather, there are power outages in far eastern Texas right now. I'm assuming that is uh, the, the direct result of, of very high winds. Right now, just over 53,000 customers without power in eastern Texas. And east of the Mississippi, look at the new earthquakes. You got one way up here, north of Ottawa, a 3.3, and this occurred just before the eclipse. We had uh, earthquakes just before, had earthquakes just after. Here's a 2.1, uh, Glen Allen, Virginia, just after the eclipse. I understand it's not very big, but that is a, a, a very rare location for an earthquake. Here's an earthquake on the, on the 8th during the eclipse uh, near uh, in eastern Kentucky. And again, these are locations that aren't necessarily um, 
famous for earthquakes. They're 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 known for they're known for their lack of earthquakes. And here's another one that was right before the the eclipse. So a strange sequence of earthquake events east of the Mississippi, uh, some in the Appalachian Mountains, up in uh, uh, eastern Canada, north of Ottawa. Are you serious? And then up here just south of uh, uh, Lake Erie, east and slightly north of Cleveland. Once again, areas that are not known for uh, persistent earthquake activity. And looking at the global seismic network, and it too has been busy the last 24 hours after the the eclipse. We're seeing the, the, the large uh, black signatures you see on these graphs here are more than likely the large earthquakes from down in Indonesia. I believe there were two, uh, uh, six and a 6.5 or something like that. Very shallow earthquakes. Typically, earthquakes in Indonesia are, are known for their depth. There are very deep earthquakes there in Tonga and uh, Vanuatu. Those earthquakes are very, very deep. These were fairly shallow, and they were detected on seismographs all around the world. So the whole Earth was vibrating after the eclipse. How about that? So coincidence? Uh, at this point, you know, I don't have the instruments to say whether it was a coincidence or not, but we did talk about the possibility of earthquakes prior to the eclipse, during the eclipse, and after the eclipse, and we're not done yet. We are 24 hours after the eclipse, and earthquakes are still a possibility because we are in some very unique planetary alignments that we're going to talk about in the next video. So look for that video tomorrow. I'm still working on that, uh, getting all that information together. I want to thank everybody for sharing all of your really cool eclipse observations along the path of the eclipse. Uh, I really appreciate that. I wish you could have been there. Um, had every intention of going. You guys know that, but the, the, the forecast got me off track. I, I didn't know where to go with regard to how much cloud cover there was going to be. So I just decided to, you know, stay close to home. And, and I'm okay with that. It, it was just one of those things, and, and that's okay. But once again, the, 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 the comet is, is in, the, in the sky. I know a lot of people were looking for the comet. I wasn't because I knew it wasn't going to be dark enough here in Phoenix. I thought maybe there was a chance. There's always a chance that these things can get really feisty the closer they get to the sun. It could have been visible during the daytime sky. If it would have, it would have been... It just would have been icing on the cake, and you heard people, you know, uh, the loud crowds in Dallas, you know, can you imagine if this thing would have developed that big, large tail in the daytime sky? I mean, it, it just would have been off the hook. Uh, the energy would have been just unbelievable. But as it turned out, it was, it was quite a spectacular event, one that everybody will always remember, and I'm glad you guys got to enjoy it. I enjoyed it from right out here. Uh, in, in Phoenix, Arizona. So once again, tomorrow we're going to talk about planetary alignments and earthquakes as earthquakes are rumbling following the, the great eclipse of 2024. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. I want to thank you guys once again for all of your excellent videos. Keep them coming. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. If you guys have any videos you'd like to share that are too large to attach to the email, come over here to the homepage of the website, earthwatchman.com. Look for this red banner that says have a large video it's a dropbox in fact i'll show you watch i'm going to click on it here we go it's very very simple takes you to a dropbox if you click on that red banner right there here you go here's the dropbox send it to me michael mr mbb you can drag and drop your your large videos into that dropbox and i'll take it from there i check it every morning thanks for watching have a super day and be safe out there